Rolling. This man is going to be performing before thousands of people in about five or six minutes, and yet you sit here very casually. Life is not a frantic one for you, is it? I'm a bundle of nerves inside. <laughs> I, <laughs> I always get just a little uptight before I go on. And Do you really? I have been watching. Oh, yeah, sure, that's part of it. Getting the adrenaline going. Uh -huh. Looking forward to it, though. I love to perform here. You know, the man in black would seem to imply that uh, there's kind of a somber man behind those clothes, but you're as warm, as family-oriented a guy, as people-oriented as, I think, any entertainer I've met. Well, the color, you know, is uh, the colorlessness, I guess, is something I've always uh, felt right about on stage. I'll tell you that probably a lot of people ask me why, you know, mm -hmm. and I never have really had a good answer, but I had several answers as to why I wear black. When I joined the Grand Ole Opry in 1957, you know, they were all wearing rhinestones and spangles, and cowboy hats and boots and cowboy suits, greens and purples and oranges. And um, I came from Memphis, mm -hmm. and the new mode of dress for entertainers was really basic black, and like uh, Elvis was wearing black, sometimes purple shirt, or Jerry Lee and uh, Carl Perkins and Roy Orbison. None of us wore uh, spangles and rhinestones and all those colors. And so I just decided when I went to Grand Ole Opry that I'd wear black. And someone told me that, uh, that, it's, uh, it's, that it was good, that it, that it was different to see somebody that didn't really try to put on a lot of flash. Mm -hmm. And I realized that maybe if I did that, they weren't looking so at the clothes so much as me, you know, which is what we try to get in entertainment business. You know, you know as you went down that list, uh, uh, Jerry Lee and Elvis and all these people, it was kind of like an extended family, and that's a little, mm -hmm. a little bit the way the, the country music folks are, isn't it? It really is. As a matter of fact, I got an invitation yesterday to Jerry Lee Lewis's birthday party. I'll be out of town when he has his birthday next week, but... I, we, I still hear from these guys. Matter of fact, I had coffee with Roy Orbison yesterday morning. He's my next door neighbor. Uh, Carl Perkins, I see every once in a while. Wasn't really all that close to Elvis in the last few years because he, he went his way and had his little world gathered mm -hmm. around him, but always had a great deal of respect and love for Elvis. We mentioned all those folks waiting upstairs, and, and you've got to get up to them in just a few moments. Mm -hmm. But another way you're going to get to them soon is a way you did, what, a year and a half ago via television in a dramatic role where mm -hmm. you played a very moving role about a man who couldn't read. Yeah. Well, this one is not quite that, it's not that kind of story. Uh, the Baron is the name of this movie, a CBS movie of the week, possibly on in November. I have a lead in it. Also, Darren McGavin and Claude Akins is in this film. June plays my ex-wife, and... A brilliant young actor named uh, Greg Webb plays my son. Uh, I play the world nine ball champion, pool billiards player. Mm. And uh, the story is loosely based on that song, or actually where that song picks up, the end of that song, the, the movie picks up there. And it's, it's a family story and a very interesting story, I think. Is working in front of those cameras as interesting as working in front of these folks? No. No, not nearly as warm. Mm. Well, I know you've got to go to work, and we don't want to hold you up. Johnny Cash, thank you so much for spending these moments My with pleasure. us. My pleasure. Thank you. Good. Excellent. Okay. Thank you.
I always like to do this one because it makes me reflect back on where I've been. And it's important to me so I don't lose track of where I'm trying to go. Well, I woke up Sunday morning with no weight up on my head. Beside the sun is green.